the environment that you saw take shape with this team this year, the atmosphere, the attitude, how important was that for the development of young players like Kakniemi, Mete, even paling towards the end as you guys were going towards a playoff push, for them to develop in that type of environment? Well, we had a very good environment this year. Uh, and uh, I think it, it, it's something that's extremely important. I mean, every, I know what happened on the ice wins hockey game, but there's a lot of preparation, a lot of focus, a lot of uh, guys on the same page and not having their own agenda, he makes a world of difference. And we did miss the playoff. And again, I just want to be clear because people might walk out of here, well, you know, they have 96 points, they made that a good year, they're happy. No, we're not happy. But we know we're heading the right direction. And the message I got from my players today is we're just getting started. And to me, and I believe they believe that. My second question is, about a week ago you were talking about having one of the, the deepest and best prospect pools in hockey that a lot of people feel that way. Give, how do you approach this summer to ensure that you're not rushing some of those players in? How, how important is it to bring other players to the table that can help you guys get to the next level so you don't rush those young players that are coming that have great potential? Yeah, and it's not, and you can't force a player. I mean, it's obviously we'll be watching, you know, it starts in prospect camp, which, you know, will be in, uh, in late June and then the rookie tournament and preseason. We judge the players by their performance. We're not going to force somebody just to say, you know what, we need to show that we're going to get still younger because at the end of the day, the players that earn the right to be on this team will. And if a young guy makes the team and by Christmas, we see that he's, he's not keeping up, he'll go to Laval. So I have no issues with that. And I'm not going to force somebody. But it's also important that they surround them with good players, older players who show them the way, like you mentioned about uh, having a good environment around our club. So, uh, so I'm just wondering, does that, make you, does that make it that much more important to be active in free agency this year, potentially on the trade market, to bring in those types of players so that you're not rushing? Well, I, I mean, I think we have that internally. I mean, I, yeah, I'm always going to look at the, the the open market, free agent. But again, I you got to be careful on July 1st. I think, as we all know, you know, I mean, a lot of contracts are not the greatest contract on July 1st. But doesn't mean we're not going to look because there's always good players available. We'll see what the price is. Everybody's got a price, and everybody's got a, a, a value you put on a player. And we'll look at that closely again this year. Mark, you mentioned the players talking about how they're just getting started now. But you've been here seven years now. The team's missed the playoffs three of the last four. What, what, why should fans be confident now that you can get the team over the hump at this point when you haven't, when you haven't, been, able, you haven't been able to so far? Well, uh, what's your dis I'm asking you so respectfully a question. What's your definition to over the hump? Getting into the playoffs, at least. Okay, so... At the beginning, we might start, we got into the playoffs, right? And uh, we didn't get our goal, trust me. We went to the conference final in 14, we lost. And, and that's when, and then last year, we went, until last year, we had that same group. You know, it's called, the, I want to say, the core. And that's when I made a decision to change that. And I had those points last year about faster, younger, you know, more energy. And we went to that route. So that's the route we're going to take now with that, this new group. And we're going to start, we're going to keep adding to this and without losing focus. I think if I'm a fan, and maybe I'm wrong, of the Montreal Canadian this year, again, forget about not making the playoff. It's there. We know that. But as a fan, I think we gave them a pretty good, you know, run. I think it was fun to watch it. You know, even our scout, when they were talking to other scouts, they said, guys, you guys have a fast team, fun to watch, and you're in the right direction. So that's what I, I based on what I saw this year, that's what I would tell our fans. Last year when you were here, you said attitude was the biggest problem. What is your, I don't want problem or concern, or what needs to be fixed the most now going into next season? Uh, well, as far as hockey is concerned, you know, I want to get our power play better. You know, to me, it's not really scoring. I mean, obviously, you want to score, but it's losing the momentum. It's not being able to set up, you know. And we made a small acquisition at the deadline, Jordan Will, and he was a right center that was able to win draws. And 
it was nothing major, but it does help. And then at some point, Phil start winning face off on the left side. And these little things make sometimes a big difference. And I know at the end, we got better. I'm not going to base that, say it's automatically going to be better next year. But there's hope, and, and, and we will address it. And we'll just sit down and find out exactly what went wrong and how we can make it better. And one last question, if I can. The, the last two seasons, you've been well below the salary cap, missed the playoffs both times. Are you prepared to spend up to the cap, and do you have permission to spend up to the cap next season if on July 1st that player or players are available? 100%, yes. Yes, I am always have permission, you say, to go to the cap. You know, I always keep a small cushion before injuries, but I do have it, and I'm willing to go there. And sometimes, but, you know, with salary cap, when you sign a player, and especially if you go July 1st, those guys are not a one- to two-year deal. It's, you know, it's seven years, six, seven-year deal. And, and as you know, the cap, it's from year to year. So it does go up, but we never know when it goes up. But I, yes, I'm willing and, and able to do that. Mo, John Lou, Patrick Friolet, Marc-Antoine Godin. Hi, Mark. Um, Max, though, we mentioned that he would like to be a half for life. Uh, would you be open to starting the negotiation process with him now to get a long-term deal set in before the season begins? Well, that's that's part of the negotiation contract discussion. I don't do that publicly, but yeah, he's a, he's you know he's he's a big part of our team, and uh, he came in from Phoenix last year, and uh, always want to play in a hockey market. And uh, I remember saying that that I mean, you guys didn't know this; it's not your fault, but I, I knew this kid had passion for a hockey market, and that goes a long way. I'll leave it to that. John, Mark, over here. Um, this morning, Carey Price said um, that uh, his personal message for, in terms of recruiting, potentially recruiting a UFA, would be that he realizes that his window is to win is getting smaller and that he's more than ever motivated to win, I guess spurred on by this season. I don't know if he expressed the same yeah. thing to you in exit interviews, but knowing that, yeah. that, that your franchise player is thinking that way, how does that influence how potentially aggressive you may be in the free agency period this, this well, summer? Well, Lou, we've always been aggressive. It just doesn't mean, you know, I mean, I can't talk about players in the past because you're not allowed to because they signed somewhere else, but we've been aggressive. And for whatever reason, players have choices now. There's, you know, 31 teams in the league. So uh, there's a, they have their own reason. Sometimes it's family, sometimes it's travel, sometimes it's all kinds of reason. It's not because it's uh, Claude Julien or it's because Carey Price, the goalie. There's other reasons sometimes they decide to go somewhere else. So, but we'll, we will never stop being aggressive. Oh, sorry, then follow up to that. Then, uh, based on what your club showed this year, the direction that it's projecting towards, do you believe that that might make it uh, easier for you to recruit the base and uh, ignore some of the uh, yeah. obstacles? Yeah, I like to believe that, but I could tell you there's in the past, you know, when we had, you know, teams in the 100 points, I had players say, I'd love to go, but my wife doesn't want to go. And that's personal. So, you know, and Max Domi just loves it here. So everybody's different.